So everyone, welcome back to our series, Talking Hair Loss. So we've got 12 people, 12 haircuts, and 12 incredible chats about hair loss. Honest conversations in the barber chair about hair loss, thinning, and receding, with some advice from me along the way. With new episodes coming every two weeks, this is Talking Hair Loss. This series is made possible by our sponsor, Manuel. All right guys, welcome back to the Riga Gentleman Studio, and welcome back to Talking Hair Loss with Manuel. Today we've got Zach in the chair. How are you doing, mate? Good, you? Yeah, I'm good, thanks, I'm good, I'm good. So, what's the plan today? Tell me about your hair loss. So, pretty much from about 16, I started losing hair okay. and I had a widow's peak and it was, it got to the point where it was nearly like to the middle of my head. Oh wow. Okay. And the front part was quite far back as well and I was okay. like, I can't have this. Yeah, yeah um, of course. So, I pretty much tried loads of haircuts where I would push my hair forward to try and cover it, but then the wind would just blow it and I would it be like... It gets to a point, don't it, where yeah. it's like you've got to, yeah, yeah, I have no, to I just do something. And yeah. then, so I got a hair transplant oh, okay. about a year and a half ago. Oh, nice, nice. I tried a couple hairstyles and then I thought, you know what, let me let it grow out. Yeah. My hair's always been straight mm -hmm. and I let it grow out for about a year and a bit. Okay. My hair turned curly for some reason and now I've got... Crazy common, kinks yeah. that I've never even yeah, it's seen common, before. Yeah. Um, lockdown kind of proved that to me because yeah. there's so many clients who like had grown their hair out just naturally through lockdown, and yeah. the, the clients who I would have I would have bet money on that they had straight hair yeah. come in. They had like a wavy yeah, hair of yeah, curls. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. like, wow, that's that's yeah. mad. So, what are you thinking of doing today? Well, I came here for I wanted to see what you thought mm -hmm. because I want to get something that complements my face shape. Mm -hmm. But I was thinking of I want a haircut that I can have three to four different styles that I can style it with. Okay. So I'm quite lazy mm -hmm. and I like to wake up and what I usually do is wet my whole head, comb it back, put the hairband in and then I'm done. Okay. I want something that I can sort of wake up, wet it, comb it back a little bit. Okay. And then get it to stay. So I like the quiff. I've got a photo. Yeah, let's have I've a look. I've got yeah. a couple. They're all different, relatively different, but I was thinking, so my hair I think is more like this mm -hmm. because it's a bit, yeah, it's got some kinks to it, but yeah. I do like the little fades like this. But this is just a guy that I saw. He has the same hair length, but mm -hmm. he styled it in a couple of different ways. Yeah, yeah. which I thought was quite nice. Mm -hmm. Three is probably the mo the maximum you're okay. going to be able to get, and to be to be able to look good three ways. So I think we need to define the, the main look you want first, and then okay. see what comes from there. So how different do you, would you like the three looks to be? Like, do you want them to be like really noticeably different? No, each time no, they can be sort of like an off-centered part to just a slick back, okay. stuff like that. Okay, but okay. Um, that's doable. Yeah. That's and I want to have something that has texture to it as well. Something okay. that like, sort of that I can run my hands through that's not set in place. The main, the main style that we you want to go for, so, that, so something you'd wear more, more often than not, what would you like that to be? A, a slick back, something that I can just push it back, pull whatever products I need and for it to just stay there. More like a... To stay there, okay. Yeah. Do you want it to be like, as in slick as in like dry or wet looking? Uh, I prefer dry. Then you want a lived in look? And then to be able to part it as well. Yeah. All right. Cool. I think that's. I think that's doable. I think that's doable. Yeah, for sure. Right. Uh, back and sides. What are you thinking? Um, I'm happy to go as short as they need to be. You decide. So you decide. I, I want to go pretty short now. Pretty short. Okay. Yeah. If you have an idea in length, you want to go to. Uh, I was thinking like a low taper. Okay. A low fade. Okay. And um, what number do you want to go down to on the fade? Two or a three. Two or three two sides. Okay. Yeah. Sure. So two. So let's do, let's just say a two and a half. For our okay. see. Yeah. Okay. So we do a two and a half on the back and sides. Do you yeah. want to do anything with the sideburns and the neck? Do you want to taper them out even more? Because I know you pointed to the skin on that picture yeah. there. Yeah. Do you want to do you want to add a skin taper in there? Do you want to add like yeah. skin down the very yeah, bottom? Yeah. yeah. If we can, okay. Yeah. 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 Of course. Yeah. All right. Cool. The style I'm gonna cut into though is gonna be the lived-in look. Yeah, that's, that's the main one. Yeah. Only because I need to add the texture in there. Yeah. If I do something slick, I can't really add too much texture to it. So I think okay. your overall look you should try and do more often than not is just be able to run your hands through here, but let it move about a little bit. Because okay. if it's set, that's, yeah, more, that's I what I... I don't want to yeah. cut it. If, if I cut it into a set style, we can't really texturize it. Because yeah. then that way it'll ping out everywhere. So yeah. I think we use the more lived in kind of loose coming back and then pro use different products to change it. Yeah. yeah. Is that's that all right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah? All right, cool, man. Right, well, let's, uh, let's get the shampooed and conditioned then, mate, and we'll, uh, we'll get started then. Okay. Cool, man. So before we get into it, we just want to say a massive thank you to the sponsor of this series, Manual. Our first video with Manual worked out so well and the partnership was amazing, so we wanted to bring more videos to you. So if you don't know, Manual is a British company dedicated to becoming the destination for men's health. Manual offer tailored and medically approved treatments for a variety of issues specific to men's health. And obviously it's the hair loss treatments we're talking about today. Best thing about it, 
it's all online. You visit the website, you answer a questionnaire about your medical history and receive a treatment recommendation. Your information goes to a specialist doctor on the platform and from there you're consulted on a specific treatment plan for your case. You receive the products at home on a recurring basis and with a medical follow-up throughout. Manual were kind enough to send us some of their products and we've had their hair loss treatments out on the shelf and our Regal Jumping Studio ever since. So let's go over here and see what they got. So guys, this is the Power Shampoo. This is a, an everyday shampoo, revitalizes your hair. It's got a, a sense of stimulation in there as well, so you can really feel it coming, going to work on the hair and the scalp as well. We've got the 5% Minoxidil as well. We've also got the Finasteride tablets as well. And the hair vitamins, which I am currently using as well and they are fantastic. And Manual have also been kind enough to offer you a discount to celebrate this series on the channel. The code's on the screen now, but it's also in the description if you miss it. And the link to follow is also in the description below. So click that to find out more about Manual and their hair loss treatments. And a massive thank you again to Manual for bringing this series to the channel. So carry on watching this, because you get some great advice and you'll also see some really good finished looks for anyone with any sort of hair loss problems. But thanks again, Manual. Right, so just shampooed and conditioned Zach's hair. Now I'm going to start by cutting in the shape on the back and sides first. That's the, our little foundation to this, to this cut. The top is going to be kind of cut into a, a nice uniform length, a bit of texture added to it, which will hopefully give him three different looks at a more medium length. So this is really good for us because we've only done short ones. So okay. I'm quite excited to do this one. It should be a good one. So the thing we do need to kind of um, talk about first though is obviously Zach's had a hair transplant. Now with a hair transplant, the hairline has been formed by the doctor. So when we're looking at getting our round of the head and we're getting our, uh, our horseshoe section and stuff, this is not going to be a natural horseshoe section. This is probably going to cut into the hairline a bit on this one because when we look at the face shape on Zach, that's the angle it needs to come out at. So I'll stand away. So you see it needs to come right out. So Zach's got an, a slightly oval face shape, right? You probably had a heart shaped face when your hairline was with the, with the widow's peak, yeah. but obviously they've, they've lowered it down quite a lot by the sounds of it. Now, when you get a hair transplant, depending how much recession you've got, depends on where they start to implant the hair, right? So as you can see, they've implanted it slightly rounded here to fill in that gap of the temple right there. So what they've done is they've gone into the side. So for me to take a horseshoe part in, I'd have to come really low to follow that recession point, which is too low for Zach, because that's, that's bending too much. That actually wants to sit a bit higher up. So realistically, I need to sort of start about here for Zach, because as you can see, that splits perfectly like that. The only problem is it cuts into the fringe. So just be aware when you are doing any section or something, just try and take that into consideration. You're gonna to have to cut into the fringe to, to balance the face shape off. Otherwise it just becomes too low. So what I might have to do is just leave that section out like that and do my horseshoe that way. I think just, just to be wary. I'm always quite wary anyway when it comes to stuff like this. So I think we're gonna to have to do that. Um, it, it, it's a bit similar to when, if there's any hairdressers out there and barbers out there, it's a bit like when you're trying to horseshoe section a mannequin head. Because it's an artificial hairline, it's not like, no, it's not, it doesn't sit in a way that you would be used to doing it in. So like on a non-artificial hairline, like a natural hairline. So it's a bit, it's a little bit like that, especially when it's, if, you know, if, if there's been a lot added in there. So I'm going to take the fringe away from this horseshoe section and start off like that. Because I'd rather prevent and cure. So what I'm gonna do with this, I'm gonna start working palm to palm to create the shape. Because I need to create that shape in there first, then we're gonna work down. Probably gonna freehand it down to a two and a half, and then just use the two and a half to flick off around the edges and then add that taper in as well. But a good one for this, I'm not, I would normally, if it was going for one look, I'd normally do this on cross graduation, but because we're going for two different looks or three different looks, I'm gonna cut this again more uniform. So then we're not cutting into a certain part of the hair that we might need. So I'm gonna start with just a, a basic two finger palm to palm section. Okay, that's what I'm gonna work on. Cause you're gonna be working into clipper work, so about that. So I wanna start just maintaining some of that length through my fingers at the top that I can then know that I can connect in. So you can see that's just sitting nice and flat, just coming into there now. So 16, you said, Zach, when you started noticing hair loss, yeah? Yeah, I mean, even 15, it was just sort of, when I was younger, I used to be pure blonde. Right. And I um, I had my fair share of haircuts, mohawks, I had uh, nice. ponytail. 
Nice. Did yeah, you know I, you? I had loads. Wow. Um, so then at like 15, when I started to see it go, I was like, oh man. And I was always like, well, I was the notorious one in like secondary school. I had really thick, long hair. Wow. And I would comb it all back and oh, I just, it just looked so good. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then, yeah, then it started to go and I had to get progressively shorter and shorter haircuts. And then by the time I was in college, it was like, I had to just comb it like a fringe. Then you were kind of stuck with the haircut, would yeah. you say, after that? Yeah. 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 That's what happens, isn't it? When you start noticing some hair loss, you end up sacrificing what you want in terms yeah. of style, because obviously you can't get it, to then whatever covers the recession, because then obviously you don't want it to become too noticeable, do you? Yeah. So yeah, no, I get it, man, I get it. Well, I ended up just saying, oh, let's embrace it. And to be fair, I did feel a lot better about myself walking around, because I... Instead of pushing my head onto my hair onto my forehead, I would push it back and, okay. just, and just go for it. And it did look all right. Um, and then I let it grow out. And then, yeah, the wind was just my enemy. For, yeah. The wind yeah. is the enemy of anyone yeah. with, a, with it when you're covering up a fringe. Yeah. So the thing is, if you've got enough, like, if you've still got enough thickness from, like, sort of just before the apex, you can utilize that quite well and create a more fuller fringe but again you are limited to like a, a crop you know or yeah. something like that or you know anything like even like a french crop with you know something you have to do yourself but it is it's a tough one mate it is it's a tough one um how did how or what was it like in your sort of friendship circles and stuff did anyone used to comment on it or oh yeah it was did they? yeah i used to get a pretty violated by everyone in my did friendship you? group yeah but it was fine yeah but um could you, could you, w w did you laugh along with it? Like, or yeah, did, did it secretly, yeah. I mean, like... to be fair, like, I was fine with it. It was fine because for me, it was just like, oh, I'm just, you know, I'm just going back a little bit. Yeah. But then it got to the point where I would look in the mirror and be like, oh man, this yeah. is going <laughs> further back than I thought because I thought it would end up stopping, but yeah. Because yeah. it can, that can happen. You can, you can start receding, but yeah. then it stops. Yeah, it stops at yeah. a certain point. I've got friends who I went to school with who, um, you know, they, they, they've always had recession in their hair yeah. and it's, it's, oh, it's gone back further, but they haven't lost it completely. You know, they've yeah. still got that kind of more, more of a widow's peak effect than yeah. them haven't actually having a widow's peak, if that makes sense, you know? Yeah. And then that's why I was like, oh, it'll be fine. And then it wasn't. And I was like, ah, oh, well, great. Yeah. Well, I mean, big, big, bigger move to go and book him for a transplant straight away. Yeah. Did you not think of Do trying any of the, um, the medication first, or did you just want to go straight in and get it? I just it wanted to go straight for it. Fair enough. Fair enough. But, um, yeah, so with the transplant, I went there to just, you know, see what it was like and speak to them. Yeah. And it was like, oh, we have one in the next two months. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Oh, wow. And then, and then they were like, oh, and we also have one tomorrow. What? And I was like, okay. And oh they were like, do you want to do it? And I was like... Yeah. Oh and my God. The thing is, I didn't have any time to research into it or to even look at any videos. What the hell? So I didn't know what I was uh, going in for. Well, no, that's pretty uh, ballsy, mate. Well done. Yeah, well. One. That's pretty, I mean, I'm impulsive, but bloody hell, that's really Yeah, impulsive. it was pretty, pretty out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. And main thing is though, mate, are you happy with it? I think it could have gone slightly more in my favor, but for really? what it is, I think it's pretty good. The only thing that I'm... I wouldn't even say annoyed about. Like I think they could have done a bit more of um, what would you call it? Pretty much where you're cutting now. You know, like the where they, you get the the shape on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they could have gone a bit more so that it's more square like. But oh, they, okay, more than but, being rounded. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's I'm I'm happy with it. That's cool. Well, I, I am. Do you know what? Honestly, from hand on heart, you've had a very good transplant done. Okay. You really have. Texture of your hair quality is amazing. Like genuinely, when you see people who've had sometimes not the best transplants, their hair is very frizzy. And your hair looks the same density and the same same texture as the rest of the top. Okay. So that's one great thing. Yeah, okay, they could have went maybe a bit more of an angle, maybe more 90 degree, more yeah. than round. Everything's balanced though, isn't it? You know what I mean? Maybe there's yeah. a reason for that. Yeah. They couldn't do it that way, you know, more yeah. than do it around. And that's what I was saying before when I was doing the horseshoe section. Yeah, it's not ideal, but we can make it work, you know yeah. what I mean? So I, th I think on the whole, you've had a great, great yeah. experience there, I would say so, for sure. So I'm just drying the sides off. I've just cut in my palm to palm. This is reduced the bulk, but I'm starting to create the shape. I've done my extra bit of consultation in the shampoo and the condition. That's my extra little bit of consultation that 
people don't tend to know that I'm doing it for that reason, but I'm doing it to feel for lumps and bumps, any moles, any skin tags, anything like that. So I'm feeling for that. I'm also feeling the shape of Zach's head as well, because I think it's a lot more more comfortable you lying back in the shampoo than me just standing here massaging yeah. head, isn't it, you know? So I don't want to freak Zach out. It's his first time here. Um, but I do that in the shampoo and condition. That's one of the reasons why I also do that as well. Um, and I, it felt fine. Oxygen the bone's a nice placement as well. doesn't stand out too much. But I still want to drop that down. I want to create the face shape and the head shape. Because if you look now straight away, you can see that that is a good shape for Zach's face. You can see straight away the squareness is coming in nicely. So when we do that, as you can see, that's the exact length that I need to cut it to. So all we do now is we taper that right down. So we're going to do the skin taper down here, blend it into the beard, and then do the two and a half around the back and sides. We drop it nice and low. Because now I've cut the shape in, there's the crown length at the back, which I'm really pleased with. That's a good length because that connects nicely in. That creates that nice rounded shape. Then I also want to do that to the back as well. So I think creating that shape first is a nice way of tailoring it, but also making sure that you prevent making a mistake. Because we, I've done it 22 years now. I can still make a mistake. There's no, no drama there. So three guard on. I'm going to start with a, my guard open, so it's a three and a half. And now there is the occipital bone right there. So I'm going to work up to the occipital bone at the back, okay? I'm going to use that bone at the back there to create my ascent into the hair that I've already cut. So again, just, just be careful guys, if you've got anyone with a transplant that is, that is cut into or being implanted into the temple, follow the round of the head and just separate the fringe. Best bit of advice. Now I'm onto my number three now, so the guard's closed, creating a three and I'm just working up and away from where the three and a half was, like that. Yeah. Close guard now onto the three. And we can up and off into that three and a half. So onto our two guard now, open this is our two and a half. This is our finished length that we're going to. And I'm going to work into our taper. So I'm just doing this round the rest of the back and sides. I'm working this up into our three. Like so. Now before I do anything else, I'm just going to blend this clipper work in. So, start at the back, close guard, zero blade, clipper comb, waking up, there's my guide, a little bit over. And just get lower down and closer to the head. As you can see, more is coming off. I'm just making sure I elevate the section so it falls on top, it layers on top of itself. So, obviously, when you got the transplant, was this something that you, you told a lot of people about? Did you keep it to yourself for a while? Well, actually, as soon as I had finished it, I was walking outside, and obviously, I don't know if you've seen someone straight after having a transplant. I have, yeah. They don't look like the uh, happiest person. No. Nope. Um, I stood like, on the side of the road and <laughs> people were looking at me like I was crazy mm -hmm. um, but yeah the first thing I done was uh, I video called my girlfriend okay and because uh, she wasn't too happy she she was I think she was worried about it because it is she probably an invasive right yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and I said oh, I'm thinking about it and then when I said oh yeah by the way I'm doing it tomorrow she was like oh um, I mean, yeah, I can see, I can see where she's coming from there yeah. a little bit. Yeah, it's a bit like I'm going in for a chat. Oh, by the way, yeah. I'll get it done tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, I pretty much, I was excited, so I just told everyone. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's I good. I just that's called good. everyone. I said, oh, look, this is what um, I've got done. Nice. Yeah, I was, uh, I was proud of it because. That's good. Yeah, it's. Uh, it's great that you said that, though, Zach, because I think it still is to a lot of men. It's, it's a bit of a taboo subject, isn't it? You know, it's like a lot of guys still probably won't openly admit that they've yeah. had a hair transplant or they want yeah. one or they, yeah. they're willing to get one. You know, I, th I feel like there's still that, that generation of men where maybe, or that demographic where they'll be like, no, 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 I, I wouldn't get one done. Yeah. But I think deep down they might want to, you know, and they see the, the, yeah. the sort of finished looks of them and stuff, or they, they do get it and they don't tell no one. In fact, I've got a client like that yeah. who's, um, who's had a chair transplant, but I'm, I'm the only one who knows, you know? Yeah. So I feel like there is still that. I, I, don't, I don't really know why it's a taboo. I don't know what, I don't know why, it's, why it is an issue. Like it's just, mm. 
because obviously you know you were quite happy about getting it. Yeah. How old are you now, Zach? If you don't mind me asking. Twenty-one. Answer? Twenty-one. Yeah. Okay. So may, maybe because it is so normal, maybe maybe you've obviously heard about transplants for a long time now. Maybe for someone maybe of my age yeah. or a bit over, it's still quite a new thing to get done to some people. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. But did mean, you ever hesitate about it? Like, were you, was there any hesitation? Like, was it? Did you just think, I, you know, if I ever lose my hair, I get a hair transplant, and that was it? Kind of thought over. I, it was always because someone in my family had it done. Oh, okay. But they had it done in Turkey, um, and yeah, they showed me the before and after. But he had like a really bad widow speak. Okay. It was like he was pretty much uh, balding from the crown and the front. Okay. And he got it done, and he just had like, but I think it was like you were saying, the hair was just so much volume to it and it was really spiky so i don't know if that is a good or bad one but um, no, I'm not, it depends it really does depend like sometimes you can get some hair transplants done that are a bit they can be like the texture of the hair doesn't come through the way the way you want it to or the way it should do whether that's maybe it's sometimes yeah. it's where the the hair is being damaged going in you know because that yeah. can happen you can get you can damage the follicle as you're putting it back in yeah. Uh, it could just be the way the hair is taken and it could just take a while to strengthen up. There's loads of different there's loads of different things that can happen with, within a transplant when they get it done. It doesn't always mean it's good or bad. It's just you just don't know really. You don't know until it's happened, that's the problem. You don't know until it's always done. But okay. um it's interesting that you went straight in. Like I'm I'm quite I'm quite amazed by you that you went like sort of into the transplant before trying any of the, the medical uh, yeah. interventions first. Was it I I know we touched on that before, but did you did you know about like the medical stuff first, or did you just did you um, shush, did you did you really just think about the transplant? I I think the transplant was for me like the only option. Oh, okay. Just because I mean I've I've heard about the medical treatments. Yeah. For me, I think by that time I was like, oh, my follicles are gone. Oh right, yeah. So you and thought it was too far gone. Yeah, yeah. and I was yeah. like, eh, hair growth would be nice. Plus, it's also you know six months to a year to see some progress i was just like oh i'm just gonna go and do it because do you think I, it was the fact that there was no guarantee do you think that yeah, might be in it as yeah. well yeah 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 you, like, you know with the transplant like you are gonna get it right you're yeah. gonna get your hair back no matter yeah. what so yeah but even like after it i was like i was worried because i was like man my hair's not growing back because it didn't grow back for about six months i didn't see much hair growth yeah yeah and then all of a sudden it was just like it was all so all of a sudden you're in this chair getting the getting yeah, three yeah, different haircuts, exactly, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> would, you, uh, would you mind at the end though? Would you, have you got any sort of before shots? Have you got any uh, pictures of what your hair was uh, like beforehand? I have to find them, but yeah, I can... Would you mind showing us at the end? Yeah. That'd be all right, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm keen to see these, so... And again, just, just for everyone watching, I, I, don't meet, I don't meet the clients who come in before, I, uh, before you turn up. I've, we literally met as I was coming in. Um, before so um it, 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 i don't really know what i don't see any before photos liam might have seen them but i don't uh, i don't get to see them so i'm just whatever you're seeing on the camera now guys is what i'm seeing basically so it's uh, that's how that's how real and raw it actually is you know and what's been the uh, the reaction from people now, now obviously have they noticed you look different or have they, have they mentioned that maybe people you haven't saw for a while um, like, they... it's funny none of like, the people that i haven't seen or haven't told did not say anything Oh, really? they, they, uh, most people couldn't even make it out. Wow. But um, which I was happy about. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But like, there's a couple of people that I now ask me, oh, where did you get it done? Because they want to get it done. Really? Um, and so I wouldn't say I'm convincing them, but um, sort of being, saying, you, you, know, you like the poster boy? Yeah, pretty maybe, much. Yeah, yeah. The poster boy. To a little friends, bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's cool, man. But Bye. it is. It is. It's one of those. You, I think with a transplant, you've got to go where you've been recommended, haven't you? You yeah, know, I think that is one of the one of the key things. If you know someone who's been there, or you, or like, you know, like you've done your research, you know, you you might have been one of the lucky ones, you know, in a way. Yeah. That you just turned up, you hadn't done much research, yeah. and you got a great transplant. Yeah. It doesn't yeah, always yeah, end yeah. like that, unfortunately, yeah. does it? You know, it, it doesn't. It doesn't always end like that. I've seen it too many times. It doesn't always end like that. That's why I was um, I was kind of like, um, I, I wanted to get it done here. Right. Because if I got it done anywhere else, I'd have to, if there were any problems, it would have to be a flight there or yeah. just... No, I can see that. I can see why that, why that would be a choice, yeah, for sure. Yeah, they, they look like, especially the UK, it's, it has, I mean, it's been, transplants have been getting done for, for years in the, in the UK. I mean, I've, I worked at a company for probably back in, from like 2011 on transplants. Yeah. Um, and they were all getting done here as well. The doctors weren't, weren't necessarily from England, though. They were from Greece, mainly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's been, you know, the UK is still a popular place for, for transplants. I know 
you know, the elephant in the room here is Turkey being yeah. the place for, for everyone to go to. Um, and yeah, there are, you know, again, there are some incredible um, clinics out there as well. So I think, again, it's just a bit like, um, I always look at it as though, if, you know, if you're going to get your bathroom done up, you get three quotes from three different companies, don't you? Yeah. It's a bit like that, I think, when you're doing a hair transplant. I think you've got to get your, you've got to get your three quotes from three different companies a lot of the time. I think, you know, again, you were, you were lucky, Jack. You yeah. Know, you, you, you struck it lucky in the first go. But again, if anyone's watching and considering it, just um, you could do a Zach and, get, and strike it lucky, or you might not do a Zach. <laughs> That's the thing. I so it's always I worth doing this. It. Yeah. But to make this really stand out, I'm going to go straight in with a stretch blend on a 0.5. So zero, go, zero blade, just open blade, like that, into the 0.5. And then from the sides, on the same angle, I'm going to work it up into our two and a half. And then I'm going to work down through the lever until I get to zero. I'm going to reverse the blend down into the beard. One guard goes on, open, and work that up into a two and a half, just using the corner. And run that down. I'm just going to work this over the arch as well. Like so. And then just refine, size five comb, and work that over the line. Just like that. And then follow the line into the middle of the lever. So two clicks down, and another two clicks to close. Teeth facing a bit more doesn't create too harsh of a line. One guard goes on, open, same again. Break that one half up into the length, break down to just below the ear. Size five comb, and just work it up into the length like that. Break that up. Two clicks down, a bit lower down now. So in between the line and where the half goes to. One card goes on, open. So we're creating a one and a half. We're pulling that away as well. Just skimming it over. And refine the taper. Like this up. And just put the half guard on just to refine over the half into the one. Any darker areas, it's always good to go over. Yeah. Now, working to the top now. So, again, I'm gonna cut in a nice length. That's gonna be a universal length that you can style around. So we're gonna keep a bit more length towards the front. But I think probably looking at it with the sides and stuff, I'd probably suggest that we go to about maybe about there, if you're okay with that. So probably just towards the arch of the nose, about there. Okay. You okay with that, yeah? Yeah. Come on. So I'm connecting this bit to here. So bringing this down. There's my guide underneath. Bring that down so we retain some length at the top. Over down at the front and graduate the front down. Uh, so we're starting to keep some more length in like that. So we're still maintaining that fringe. So as that pulls back, we've got that shape in there as well. And like that as well. So this is creating a nice graduation. 
So give me a sort of um, give me a sort of your ideas on the sort of the, the the reason behind the sort of three to four different looks that you like to achieve. Is it is it boredom of your your, your hairstyle all the time? Or? Um, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. The thing is, fair, it's like because I'm I, I do a lot of well, I say sports. So I train jujitsu. Oh, nice, nice. Which um, I tried to tie up my hair. It wasn't long enough to where I could tie it up, but it was long enough to where I could put a um, a hairband in it. Right, okay. Like a headband. Yeah. But it's quite rough, and so it just constantly fell out. Right, um, okay. It got to the point where I would just train, and my hair would just go absolutely mental. Right. It, it was just, it was everywhere, and yeah, it wasn't a good look. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, and then also... Um, well, I want to have a professional, I just want to have, I guess, will be a good word, a variety of different looks, Yeah. depending on what I'm doing in that day. Nice. Yeah. Um, I like it. So I want to have a professional look. I want to have a casual look. Yeah. Just whatever, depending, depending on whatever you're doing yeah. that day or whatever, you, yeah. can, you can have a hairstyle that suits you. Which is different to what I was getting with the, well, with my hair. Okay before because it was the same thing no matter what yeah, yeah it would yeah. just comb it back hairband right yeah um and it would just it just kind of sat there right okay yeah fair enough yeah no i get that man yeah i like that it's a good idea it's a good idea yeah. and i think since i've now actually got hair that i'm happy with and i've got my transplant done and everything i want to i want to sort of mess around and take the, the time to do something with my hair rather yeah. than just just having the same thing all the yeah. time yeah no i get it man i get it there we go. So that's all connected in both sides now. So length on top, take about that much off. And again, because you've got that wave, I'm going to cut it nice and straight. All the way through. Now this is a good length to keep waving it, to create a slick back finish, to create a, a pattern of some sort, but also to wear it nice and textured as well. So I think what we'll do, we'll start with the sort of brush back, then we'll part it, then we'll do the lifting. All right, just so you can see, I'd say that the variations in one go. Put it out, nice and straight, the little triangle off. Like a little bit of tension, nothing too heavy on that part there, because we want to, it's going to shrink anyway. From the razor through just to give it a bit of movement. So from halfway up to my fingers, and through the front just a little tiny bit below halfway, and then just scattering it through. This horizontal. Like so. And then just to finish off, a little bit of scissor over comb as well, just onto the back and sides, just to make sure we refine the clipper work. A little bit of fine tuner on the fringe as well. So where this comes here, just slide through this a little bit just to bring it back a touch. Right, so. When it comes to finishing it off, what I'm going to do, I'm going to blow dry this. Or as it is, what you could do is just put a little bit of product through. So it's towel dried, essentially. And you can just put this in. Now, this is a pr no product look, so this looks completely matte. Right, so when you go up in the morning, you wash your hair. Once you've towel dried it off, you put a bit of this in. And as you work it through, when it dries into your hair, it'll be completely matte. So it'll just look like it sits back. Just a bit more of a classic, more smart, and maybe just bring it over to one side so you can just bring it back if you wanted to, right? So that's one particular look you could go for. Just bring the sides in and bring it back if you wanted to, right? Obviously, you can put a bit more effort into that, but that's what you could go for if you wanted just to bring it back, right? If you want to put a brush in it, you could do this and you could really slick it back if you wanted to, like that. If that is the sort of desired look you want to go for. So it will still come back, right? It'll still keep the corners in it, it'll still stay in shape, right? If that's what you like. Yeah. You could do a part, so I go from left to right, because that's where your natural part wants to come. So just using the comb like that, and then just bring that across. You could go for something a bit more like that, and then just give yourself a finger separation. And you'd have something hanging down a bit more like that if you want to. So it's got a bit more movement in it, coming over to one side like that, if that's what you want to do as well. So you could bring the two over there, have that part in it, separate it with your comb like this, and then use your fingers to create that more natural finish. Or you could go for that lived-in look, which I think would be better, like every day, where you could just scrunch it and have it all sitting a bit more messy and then bring that out with the style. So 
For example, the one product that I've used there will create all three different looks. It just depends on which effort you want to put in. So if you were over the parson, you could blast it through the hairdryer with a nozzle on, blast it straight out, and then they have a bit more of a kind of softer hang of a, of a wave. With this, the lift-in look, dry it with a diffuser. So what you end up with is a more natural finish. You just scrunch that in. Just like that. And then tweak it around so you've got that more lived-in, messier finish. So that's another look you could try and achieve as well. Which I think this everyday look will probably be good because this kind of works for everything. But if you want to put a part in, you could work it from left to right and that will separate it. Or if you want to have it a bit more slicky, you could blow dry it straight out. Because as you can see, it's completely balanced both sides. The only thing that's hang hanging over is this bit of the fringe, which we then tuck in to match in the side. So that way you get that nice balance through the corners as well. So there's the sort of looks you can try and achieve. Which one, which one would you like to go for more often than not yourself? Uh, I think the first one. The slick back? Yeah. Cool. I really like that one. Okay. Do you want to have it so it's more smoother or do you want to have it where it's just sitting more natural? Uh, I think natural's best for me, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we take away the kind of messiness and the lifting look and we have it just come back. So you use the nozzle. This won't create any more wave or curl than what we've got. If you use the brush, you'd smooth it out. No, you do. Just bring it back like this. So the fusion will bring out the more lifting look a nozzle will create a more swept back finish, just like that. And that's the sort of a, the everyday look you can go for as well, if you prefer. Yeah. Depends what you like the most of. Just put my glasses on. Oh, so yeah, I can put yeah, them on, yeah. I'll take this off. Here. Right, so there is the finish, mate. So what, what, what do you think? Yeah, I'm really happy with that. Looks nice, doesn't it, man? Yeah. Looks nice. I'll show you the back and sides as well so you can see. So there's what we call like the flow and the separation sitting through there. It all falls yeah. nicely into the back. So the shape's nice. There's a taper into the bottom and into the sides on both sides as well. So it all falls really nice. in just nicely. Yeah, yeah happy, I really yeah? like it. Yeah, it's good. Thanks, man. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Oh, it is high, isn't it? Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. that's Yeah, that's wow. when you're like... Yeah, you look was, so different, man. Yeah. Wow, that was really high, wasn't it, bloody? And that high. was, yeah, a year and a half ago. So I was like That's 19. Going through really well, you know. Yeah, to this. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy with this. Look at, that. Like, look at the, look at this, look at like the hair you've got now. Yeah, like, you've yeah, got like yeah. hair envy for most people yeah. right now. That's amazing. Yeah, I'm happy with it. You should be, mate. You and now, now I've got a good style, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. That's it. Yeah. So you've been a really good success, don't you think, for that? For yeah. sure, mate, yeah. Oh, I'm happy for you, man. It's great. <laughs> it's great. I'm glad you like the look. Yeah, thank Thanks, you. Mate. Thank you. So thanks for watching this uh, latest episode of Talking Hair Loss, guys. Um, our other episodes are here, and we are new episodes coming out every two weeks. So don't forget, subscribe and like and comment on this video and let us know what you're thinking.